Our world is changing. At no time in history have we been so connected by technology, so empowered by innovation. Many of us are living longer than any generation before, a direct result of better nutrition, sanitation and improving healthcare. Universal access to medicine is undeniably transforming lives. Yet at the same time, the growth in pharmaceuticals across the world also raises the threat of adverse reaction to drugs. To help protect patients, we must ensure the public are not harmed by the very medicines created to cure them. Today, this watchdog role is being played out in 150 countries by the Uppsala Monitoring Centre and its global partners. Uppsala Monitoring Centre was established 40 years ago to support the World Health Organization network of countries working together for safer use of medicines. UMC is an independent Swedish foundation working closely with WHO. Our purpose is to tackle one of the big questions in human health care. How can we make sure that patients get the maximum benefit from their medicines and suffer the least harm? How can we build global solutions for safer medicines? From day one, our ambition was clear. In collaboration with WHO, to work with partners across the globe to encourage reporting of adverse effects of medicines, to record and understand them, and reduce the risk of their happening again. This is the safety monitoring of medicines, the science known as pharmacovigilance. Today, innovation is undoubtedly democratizing access to life-changing medicines and creating cures against diseases that have blighted society for centuries. Yet, like many other sectors, healthcare is entering a period of rapid change. The advance of new technologies and discoveries are among the many factors propelling patient empowerment in developing countries. For Dr. Dorothy Toe, the Assistant Group Director of HSA, the Drug Regulatory Authority in Singapore, it's a journey that is fundamentally changing how we prevent, diagnose and cure diseases. Singapore is a classic example of a melting pot with many cultures and communities living together. So as a society, we look at the child and we look at the future. And I think the government's vision is to ensure that everybody lives healthily, takes care of their health from the time when they are young all the way to when they're maybe more senior. And I think these count for one of the reasons why Singapore has one of the lowest GDP spending uh, comparatively. I think in this digital era, pharmacovigilance should be looked at in a more sophisticated manner. People's gene could just be on a smart card or maybe our information is just in our handphone. But we can just tap when we go into the hospital and the doctor knows all about our genetic makeup. We can personalise medication for each individual and actually it contributes a big way to pharmacovigilance because as we customise medications, we might reduce side effects. We might increase the efficacy of medications taken by individuals or patients. The knowledge that we have in the application of pharmacogenetics is only at its infancy. I think there's a lot of room for expansion and growth. We need more collaborations to be able to uncover such genetic markers within the global population. And these markers may differ from country to country or from population to population. And I think it's important that we come together and collaborate so that we can bring pharmacovigilance to another level of sophistication and advancement to prospectively protect public health. And with technological advances in big data, I think we can also find out a lot more about medication because pharma companies may just know a certain amount based on the trial that they have conducted. Doctors may just know about individual patients. And regulators, we know what's submitted to us. But collectively, if everybody has access to the electronic health record, then there's great power in advancing pharmacovigilance to new heights that we've never known before.